Hi everyone, welcome to GoFries and in this video we have the Galaxy B450M Tiger General. I know that the packaging does not say Tiger General, but it actually does say it in Chinese because over here, or should I say here, you see the word Hu Jiang. Hu means Tiger, Jiang means General. So yes, uh, that's uh, Tiger General. And with that, um, uh, this board is uh, quite difficult. I, I, I don't know where is it available in, given that it's a China, that's a Chinese tech, so likely you'll find it in China. But for other parts of this world, I have no idea how the availability. Given the price of RM249 or so in Malaysia, at least I saw on our online shopping uh, website, 259, 249 comes to about 60, uh, 60 thereabouts USD. It's multiplied by 4 point something something, depending on the change rate and all that. So I reckon it's about 60 to 65 US range. And with that, I can, I'm going to tell you ahead that uh, this is not a board that I would recommend for that price point. And with that, let's uh, begin with me talking about the layout of the board. Let's head over to that section right now. Now let's start from this corner. As you can see, there's just two dim slots. There's no USB connection over here because strangely enough, they brought everything down over to this side. Now let's have a look. The USB connection is all the way towards the back. As you can see, it's at the almost at the corner really, and it's at the bottom part down here. So imagine whatever your casing you're using, you're going to have to drag it all the way down here. And there's no front panel connector over at this side as well because they've shifted it over to here. The front panel connector is over here, which is to me a very strange location. And speaking of which, uh, this location, there's only one full length PCIe slot. And to make matters worse, let me try to zoom in over here, okay. Note that the clear CMOS jumper is right smack at the bottom of the PCIe slot, which is ridiculous. Especially when you have a graphics card installed and if you're doing any tweaking over the BIOS and you run into a snag, then how are you going to reset the CMOS without re first dismantling? The graphics card. You have to remove the graphics card before you can access the CMOS, clear CMOS jumper down here. Bad design, totally bad. And what's even worse is this part. Have a look. This is the VRM. The what I know is a 3 plus 3 phase VRM. I do not know what um, details they, they have over here like for the choke, for whatever else, but um, I'll go into the details on the performance because this to me is a concern because as you can see the VRM this is probably the first board I see that has no heat sink over the VRM and this might be a concern of course actually this is a concern because being a B450 board people might put a certain type of of the higher and higher power draw processors on it thinking that well because it's a B450 board you can put something like um 2700X or 3700X on it or whatever. So I'll get into that part a bit later. So overall, this is what the board looks like up close. And I am, at this point, I don't know about you guys, but I already feel disappointed at the design. Two dims, two dims, just two dim slots, clear CMOS, right smack at the bottom of the PCIe slot. Front panel header is here, USB header is here, and no VRM heatsink. So all this, to me, doesn't look good on the board itself. Next up, let's talk about the UEFI interface. Now about the UEFI interface, it's, uh, let me try to put it in words in proper uh, explanation, as you can hear, I'm panting my breath simply because Okay, let's start. The UFI itself, it's poorly designed. It starts off in Chinese. Good thing I know how to read Chinese, so I switch it to English, and this is what it is. It is probably the worst ever UFI I've ever seen. Now, the, now here's the other issue I had with the board is that 
I tried to run a 3000 series processor and I cannot run it. So I thought I want to update the, the BIOS and the BIOS update is, uh, the, there's no way to update the BIOS through the UEFI interface. So you have to enter Windows. Yes, you have to load an OS and follow the instructions, run the file. So it runs a command line through administrator mode. It runs a command line instructions. And once it's updated, I get a new interface. It is even worse because now with the new interface, I can't even go on the main menu without, it took me a while to figure out I can't even go in the main menu without going first down to that green arrow in the lower left corner. Yes, I had to reach that, press the left arrow key to reach that, that green button at the lower left corner and press down to exit so that I can reach the main menu on top, which is ridiculous. And even after doing so, I could only run my Ryzen 7 3700X only once and even that it has a blue screen of death and for after that, I just can't run it anymore. So I'm using a Ryzen 7 2700X for the test. So basically the UFI is garbage. I couldn't even get it to run 3000 series processor. I spent a lot of time on all these things and the interface alone is so bad that I've already decided not to go into details like say overclocking and other forms of tweaking because it's just really that bad. I've never seen a UFI interface that bad and I hope to not see any like that again. I, I thought Biostar's UFI was bad but this one takes the cake and it's miles ahead or more, more like miles behind when it comes to interface design. Two other things I wish to highlight. First being that the mouse does not always work and in my experience it doesn't work most of the time. And number two, the UFI does not come with a function to capture the screen. Now let's talk about the test. Um, I ran the Ryzen 7 2700X on this motherboard with the Wraith Prism Cooler. And it was on an open bench, yes. Room temperature of about 28 degrees Celsius. And I ran ADA64 stress test. And guess what? The VRM reading, I was using my thermal camera and I saw the reading peaked at about 93 degrees Celsius over here. And since I'm running a Wraith Prism, that means there's air flowing on it. And once I obstruct the air flow, the temperature reaches about 99 degrees Celsius. That's really a ridiculous performance. And it's, I guess it's something you can expect considering that it does not have a VRM cooler. Now supposedly if you run a processor of a lower power draw like um, Ryzen 5 2600, I have a Ryzen 5 2600 and I did the same test again with the Wraith Prism and I did it with and without the airflow obstruction and the temperatures were about 73 degrees Celsius when there's airflow and it goes to about 70 it goes about actually it goes about 81 degrees Celsius when the airflow is obstructed either way it's bad so this is an open bench so if it's on a closed casing if there's and you know at this price point people might use it on a cheap casing and supposedly if what well, if the casing does not have a fan up, up here? Even that, the fan is usually an exhaust. It's not actually blowing at the thing. And what kind of cooler do they use? Um, if it's a towel cooler, maybe it's a bit better for the air, airflow. But if it's a, you know, some people, they use AIOs. I know it's a cheap build, but there's also, there's also cheap AIOs. So if it's running an AIO, there will be literally no fan uh, airflow over this area. So this is the concern. Overall, what do I think of this board, I think it's a very poorly designed board. It was bad from the UFI. It was bad on the design and it's bad on the VRM. So I would not recommend this board to anyone. You might seen, have seen builders built with, um, have uh, set up with this board. Uh, I wouldn't say it's problematic because the whoever built the system would have routed everything for you, place a low-end cooler, considering that is for low-end builds. 
you probably and if you are buying from builders you probably won't even touch the ufi so technically speaking it will work but that doesn't mean it's a good board it will work yes it will work you don't touch the ufi fine then you are not experiencing the the bad ufi you are not doing any of the setup somebody has already set up for you it, so you wouldn't be bothered by the layout but even so as a tech reviewer i am highlighting the flaws of the design and because some people might think this is a b450 board you can buy it to perform overclocking or whatever else but this is not the case as what i highlighted to you the vrm the reset cmos uh, jumper is an awkward location all that you know, is there's also the limitation two dim slots and the BIOS itself is, is a problem. Uh, some people, you might think that it's okay, you buy a 2000 series uh, Ryzen processor and you can upgrade later on. But based on my experience, even the 3000 series doesn't work well. So if you ever buy this board or get a system with this board, I hope you saw this video and know that you may have limitations or complications later on. So overall, thumbs down for this board. I don't have a badge for, for this, but it's not a board that I would recommend anyone to buy. If you have RM250, which is about the, which the price of the board, I guess. is. I saw it online, it's about 249. I recommend topping up another RM50 for about 300 or RM70 to 320 for better boards. There's, there's actually plenty of B450 boards that are just not too much um, extra but gives you a lot more things. Um, I like to, I don't mean to sound like a fanboy or anything, you guys know I, I use a lot of ASRock products but ASRock, for example, ASRock's B450 M Pro 4 is about RM320 and offers a whole lot more things compared to this. It has four dim slots. It has two full length PCIe slots. It doesn't have clear CMOS jumper at an awkward location. Um, USBs at the front, front panel headers there. It even has RGB headers, of which this does not have. So that's, um, if you want to cut costs, of course this board, uh, yeah, the VRM heat sinks. Yes, so you want to really cut costs, there's this board, but the other brands board doesn't cost that much more and gives a lot more compared to this. So overall, I consider this board junk and I do hope that Galax improves on this. So, alright, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.